Hey. And hey. Why is my camera not turning on? You guys are <laughs> All right, camera. Hey, man. There's Kat. Yeah, where are hey. you? Hey. Hey, guys. Uh, why is my camera not turning on? I don't understand why. Oh, I'm charging my phone. Blame Mercury and Retrogate for all this shit. Yeah. I was like, ugh. Mercury yeah. here, microwaves. Um, yeah, <laughs> I'm here, refreshing. but I it it says I, my camera is on. I don't hold on. Let me try this again. Video settings. Okay. Oh man. <laughs> What's going on, Bobby? <laughs> I'm right. It's really I heavy. need a drink. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> Did you need a drink? Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm water. If my back Just camera work. Water. If my back camera work, I'm gonna flip, flip it around. But I don't understand. Ryan, yes. Can you oh, oh. To my I have to wrap. Yes, flip it. <laughs> thank you. Okay, thank you. <laughs> you can't right. see it because, but you know, I just want to let you know. Did you get the um the brains with it? The little wrapped in cellophane? Did you get that? All right. Yes, I sure yeah. did. Okay, good. But also, um, that means I cannot see the chat or anything because I have a back face and cramp. That's okay, Jazz. So, yeah, we'll uh, we'll read the question. I love your hair. Yes, we all looking fine today, okay? Okay, welcome everyone to a brief black car history. Uh, my name is Zero Gravity. I am a creator and host dedicated to the horror and horror adjacent realms. Today, I have gathered a group of extremely qualified horror creators to give y'all a quick overview of the Black Horror Experience to celebrate Juneteenth with Virtuous Con today. Um, all of us, we love spreading knowledge on this topic. So if anyone in the audience has any questions, just hold on to them and we'll answer them at the end of this panel. Um, so first off, I wanna give the floor to my panelists. Um, just give us your your name, your pronouns, occupation, and how about the most recent movie you watched? Let's start with Kai. Hi, I'm Kai. Kai FX. My pronouns are two days, and um, I'm a horror content creator, podcaster, special effects makeup artist with everything. Um, and the most recent film I saw was the 2019 Shutter original Spiral. That was a good one. I like that one. I'm late, I'm late to the party, but it was, a, it was great. It was. <laughs> Ryan, Brother Ghoulish. Hey, everybody. So my name is Ryan. I also go by Brother Ghoulish. I'm a podcaster of the Brother Ghoulish's Tune podcast with, um, and also a writer. So I share stories there. The most recent film that I saw was Hellfest. I was watching it yesterday with, oh, so good. Yeah, with Jazz and uh, the rest of the crew. So Sheree from Nightmare Fears and also Jamie. We always cutting it up in Clubhouse. <laughs> Bobby? Hey everybody, I'm Bobby Torres. I have a YouTube channel called Bobby Likes It Spooky. Um, my pronouns is he, um, is. <laughs> um, and the, re um, the most recent movie I watched was Climax that came out in 2018. Um, not too sure you guys seen that movie, but bizarre, crazy movie, but I just was feeling that mood. So yeah. Cat. Hey everybody, um, I'm Cat, one half a girl that's scary. Um, we are a horror and sci-fi podcast um, based in the D.C. Merla area. Um, and the last movie I saw, I rewatched Zombie for Sale. That was fun. So just wanted to revisit it again. The good one. Mm -hmm. And last but not least, Jazz. Hey, hey y'all, I am Jasmine, the other half of Girl That's Scary. Now, I did watch Hellfest with Ryan. However... I came back after Hellfest and decided, ooh, I'm about to watch Bad Taste. Why? Why did I do that? But I, <laughs> hey, I vlogged it. <laughs> okay, guys, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you had a, a very easy start to your Juneteenth holiday. Um, so let's talk about the basics. Um, I'm sure we've all been down this road before, but let's do it again. Let's start with the tropes. I feel like that's the the best place to start in talking about the black horror experience. Um, but you know, black horror cliches are they're like the forefront of of our experience. Unfortunately, uh, it's it's the most obvious inequality in the genre and the most popular in use. We see it all over the place. 
even though we've freaking had it. But, you know, what once was the Mammy and the Jigabo and the Sambo and all of these ugly, ugly tropes have kind of transformed and found their way into horror um, in a more digestible way, if you will. Um, so anyone have any comment on black horror tropes? <laughs> just, yeah. You don't have to raise your hand, just jump in. Just oh, jump in. I can't see you before I'm talking, so I'm just like, hey, me, I raise my hand. Um, so like what you said, they've changed things to more palatable. So like that Mammy character is now that supportive black friend. Are you okay, girl? Let me make sure you're all right. Let me mm -hmm. sacrifice myself for you. And I'm like, ooh. That stinks. That's smelly behavior. Mm -hmm. Or you have the Sambo character, like the entertainer. You have that comedic. They're always comedic relief. Like they're always jumping in. Aha! Mm -hmm. I'm a, I'm funny. Like, but why can't they just be a regular person? Why do they have to tell jokes? This is a horror movie. Right. <laughs> I agree. Um, and we, as you was talking, uh, Jazz, I was thinking about the show Them, when they bought up the um the character that was in blackface. And I didn't really know how to feel about that character too much just because it seemed like he was trying to be funny, but then also scary. And it's like, mm -hmm. I didn't know what they were trying to give with that character. Um, and just with that show in general, it's just like, I just want them to retire the whole, the whole thing. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> it, 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 it's, it's... Oh, go ahead, Kai. No, 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 go ahead, finish, it's fine. Oh. Oh, no, no. Um, I was just saying, I just want them to be tired of the whole thing. It's, it's getting tiring and old. And yes, I appreciate the whole new spin, especially with Lovecraft Country and them. Um, yes, it was new, it was fresh, but it's also still triggering. It's also still kind of just disappointing. Like, I want to see new stuff. I'm tired of seeing the same old horror tropes being used again, but just spent differently. Mm -hmm. I want something fresh and new. Something that I noticed, uh, was it the, I don't know the year, the last Friday the 13th that they made was that now um, with like films like Scream, the hyper or like ultra aware films that now they're creating these like hyper aware characters of the blackness and trying to, I guess, um, oh, well, I'm the black guy. Am I supposed to go out for, like, you remember that black character in the in the Friday the 13th yeah. remake? He's like, what, what do you mean? I'm, I'm the black guy. And I'm, a, I'm like, okay, that's, you being hyper aware of your blackness in R does not, does not shy away from the fact that they are still, that it's still a trope. <laughs> like, yeah. you're just being aware of the fact that, okay, I'm the black dude, I gotta go out first. And it was just a lot. So I, that's something that I've also noticed that there's like this hyper awareness. And I'm like, I don't know if these filmmakers are creating or like, projecting this out as a form of like gaslighting black mm -hmm. audiences or black viewers, but it's just like, we get it. You're, you're just trying to be hyper aware. That means that you know what you're doing. Like, yeah. I don't know. That's just something That's that I picked up. Point. I, I, I never thought of it as like uh, a form of gaslighting. Yeah, it's gaslighting. Like, when we say like, when we talk about our black horror tropes, of course, the first one that always comes to our mind is the black dude, the black chick, whoever, they're gonna go first. And oh, that that's yeah. above everything else. That is the one. And it's kind of become like, a, I, I want to say like, even like a running joke, like you said, how they put it in that new Friday the 13th movie. And I've seen it in like countless movies and, and, and TV shows where these, these characters kind of like break the fourth wall in a way like, <laughs> oh, I'm the black dude with the guy first. Um, but I never really thought of that as gaslighting. And, you know, I guess whoever is writing the script is thinking maybe that they are undoing something by bringing that yeah. to the audience's attention. It's not. Um, yeah. But it's absolutely not when you still have this character who exists to be the, are you okay? I'm going to put yeah. my life, you know, on the line for you. And it's, it's very, um, you know, one step forward, one step back kind of thing. It's definitely one of those situations where the way that these tropes keep persevering even in recent horror that's coming out like the sacrificial negro tropes it's showing that not only do they not seem to understand how to handle or accept black humanity but they're not interested in learning how to change it in a lot of cases because sometimes i think that when it's happening what it stinks of especially with that hyper awareness i want to give you points on that i really love that because i do notice that um it's still abandoning black humanity like I was reading Darkly by Leela Taylor and she was talking about something called digital blackface that's happening now where these black expressions or like these black moments in pop culture are used as responses to things. And it's almost like still abandoning 
black humanity because it's becoming a caricature of a um you know and these things are taken out of context typically you know like the kid who was holding the cup and you know doing his eyes like this and stuff yeah. you know we can make those type of jokes and stuff but when you really dig down into it there's something kind of scary about the idea that it's using a caricature of a black moment out of context to further abandon black humanity and it kind of plays into how these tropes are still happening it's like if they get more people of color and not just one or two in these creative spaces I think that very easily, any one of us, for example, I feel like if they were to just hit any of us up, we would just let them know, we see what you're doing, but this is still a trope. You know, this is still a sacrificial Negro. Negro. This is still a magical Negro. I'm not, I'm not sure why they don't see it, but this is why you need more Black people in the writer's rooms. <laughs> That's true. And that makes me and that makes me question like, yeah, there's not enough black people in the writer's room, but also black people that's cre uh that's directing and producing, are they actually saying anything about about it, you know? No, like are not. they willing to make those changes? Are they okay with it just because they're mm -hmm. getting a check, you know? So yeah. it even point, goes so, exactly it, I think it goes deeper, like for example, just like the basic like research like when you're creating a film or, or whatever you have you like is this culturally accurate is this culturally appropriate to say or to de de depict about uh, a group of people that i you know that i don't that i don't associate with because but i am writing about them or i have mm -hmm. a character about them is this something that is culturally appropriate and or accurate about them okay start there <laughs> and then build up to where it's like okay in this situation what would this character do what would this character do but if you don't have the, the foundation of just being just culturally accurate then mm -hmm. you go that first. <laughs> and to add on to what bobby was saying like is the set is the work environment a safe space are there a lot of people or are there a little people, a little bit of people on set or who around us that look like me? Um, am I in an environment where I feel comfortable enough to speak up about what's going on or are they uh, looking for my input? That's important too, because if people at the job don't feel comfortable speaking up, then even when, you know, they see something is in the wrong, they don't want to say something out of fear or something to happen to them. Like, or, you know, not everybody's like that, but some people are like that. And that just trickles down. So lack of people in the room and can't nobody speak up about what's going on. Mm. Right. Terrible. Yep. Right. Yep. Um, Sharice, can we get a question, please? From the audience? Because we're on a roll right now. Right. right? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about using those Jim Crow era tropes as the actual source of horror in a film? Kind of to show everyone how horrible the history of this country is. That's a good question. And that's a, a a very hot question now. Yeah. <laughs> Does anyone want to start on that one? Let me, me like, get my brain together. That was a jab. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. Okay. <laughs> Y'all, we okay. The problem with this is, and I did a whole thing. I watched them in like a twenty-four hour span because everybody's like, "It's so good. It's so. It's not so good. It's, it's technically nice. nice. The camera, the shots, the dialogue, the clothes. That's nice. But when you take this horrible history and just shove all this trauma in everybody's face. Look, there's real monsters. First of all, if you have to watch that much black trauma to understand that there all these things happen, I question your empathy. I question are you like being willfully dense? Because you it you don't you shouldn't have to put other people through all of that because you won't open a book real quick. Because mm -hmm. me reading as a black person, me reading something like that happening in a few sentences, I'm gonna get the same tummy, stomach turning, you know, kind of feeling as I would watching it. I don't need to see that. Who is that for? Who is that for? Who are we showing how horrible it is? Because black people know you're making this for white people and then you're taking black pain as a learning vehicle for white people to feel so they can feel bad about how slavery and Jim Crow was. You should feel bad already. Like no, nobody should be making a series so you can understand where racism is, especially when they just are, didn't they just pass like that voting law in Georgia? They're yeah. literally like this, this, these things are happening right now, today. You don't have to travel back to the fifties. You don't have to do that. All you have to do is open your eyes and listen to black people. That's it. That, Unfortunately, yeah. that's what not everybody want to do. Like everybody's um, addicted to entertainment, so that's still. I'm not gonna say it's the right way they should get it because, like, 
the right way is like what you said, Jess, is for them to listen to us, experience yeah. the real world. You know what I mean? Actually speak to people. And you're watching, like you was talking about them and you're learning that way. Then you're having, you know, white people approaching you saying like, oh my gosh, like, and it's like, I don't want to hear it. Like, <laughs> yeah. I feel like no. trauma, bond, trauma bombing people is not a, 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 a an accurate way to educate. It, it, especially for black people like us. And we love hard. So of course we're gonna see something like them that looks just like Lovecraft Country or wannabe. But you, you see something like that and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm intrigued. I'm, I love black heart. Let me look at this. And it's trauma bombing you with mm. all of this shit. Oh, stuff, sorry. <laughs> and <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm so moved. Like, it's just like, no, that is not the proper way to educate if you like, like Jazz said, if you have to be that emotionally invoked to find some type of empathy with a group of people, then something is wrong with you. Yeah. Yeah. And like, I want to follow directly up with Jasmine because like bullet point one that she said, you know, open your eyes because America has been racist. And like you were saying also, Jazz, as a follow up, you know, not only do black people know from our lived experiences, but I know uh, many of us were forced to watch things like Roots, like growing up in school. Oh, and God. the reality <laughs> is, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, so we already know what's good. So bullet point one, open your eyes. To reiterate her second point on that, you also need to talk to more black people because like y'all are, I mean, we're all really coalescing a big point here, right? Because like Kat is saying, like Bobby was saying, there are probably black people in these rooms, but you know, are they feeling comfortable? Like they're in a safe space to speak up for one. And for two, is it Terry Crews and Candace Owens? Because they don't speak for me. So there, there, there's layers to that experience as well. But I want to follow it up with a third bullet point, which is set your ego aside. The reality is, I don't think it's any surprise because we all like run really close together. Like when I first saw them, I thought it was like, okay, and it was cool and stuff. But then as time went on, I set my ego aside because the reality is we have to grow as a community. And if we don't set our ego aside and shit, then we're just going to keep on creating like what Kai called trauma bond, uh, bombing. Mm -hmm. The reality is a lot of this stuff isn't triggering because of some fake fictional shit. It's this life that we're all living in every day and encountering racism every single day. Like I know many people on the panel that I vibe with, their family members have been through some traumatic ass shit. Like my family members have been through traumatic shit because of institutional racism. So you just have to listen to what we're all saying and set your ego aside and just leave those tropes alone. There are so many other ways to represent us. That's the soul of what I'm hearing in it. It's that people are tired of as black people. Yes, lay on me fingers, Bobby. I'm not going to pay that. So, <laughs> I'm not going to pay that. But um, the reality is like, we're tired of seeing ourselves as slaves. We're tired of seeing ourselves like as all of these tired ass things. Can we be zombie stompers? Can we be werewolf hunters? Can we be the werewolf? Can we be... <laughs> and I and y'all have told me some of y'all ideas offline that I'm not going to blast y'all on, but all of y'all are fucking amazing ass storytellers. And the reality is if they celebrate like the other ways we can be represented and leave the old shit alone, then it'll just be better. Leave the slavery stuff alone. Leave the civil rights stuff alone. Leave race as the horror alone. Like we don't want to hear it anymore. We don't want to see it anymore. Yes. We know what's good and we need to move on. The only thing I want is another season of Lovecraft Country. That's it. <laughs> yes. That's it. It's, for me, it's like be proactive instead of reactive. Like, it's 2021. It's 2021. Like, yeah. there are so many amazing hard content creators or just storytellers in general. Like, mm -hmm. just leave it alone. Just drop it. Just drop it. <laughs> just leave it alone. Yes, drop I see. It. So <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> just, leave, just leave it alone um okay let's see one more question um are you tired of horror shows wait are you tired of horror shows where blacks have no agency of oh course. lord i mean <laughs> of course <laughs> yes the answer to that question can i start that one actually yes, <laughs> yeah like because I, I feel like this is a simple one right it's like if you make a black character give them something to live for and fight for <laughs> in the end i don't see why people keep on not giving black characters agency or because if you make them like as a character that actually has something to fight for through the horror then you'll dissolve a lot of that bullshit 
like then they won't be the black best friend asking like jess was saying earlier like are you okay like <laughs> we're so tired of that yeah I, I think that it would be easier and and honestly whoever is writing these stories wouldn't have to think much about it if when they created the character in in from the jump in the beginning gave them a sense of purpose then you wouldn't have to you know at the end of your screenwriting process oh i need a black character and then you just write them in real quick and not have them you know be part of the story at all but start with that maybe and then it won't be so hard to ignore these things if they actually have some sense of purpose and i'm looking at a quiet place part two and i know this movie yes. came out very recently so oh I not my spoilers, but i i adored hmm. the movie i adored the first one but i really think that this pandemic has is we've been inside for a long time we've had yeah. plenty of new hearts to talk about to soak up plenty of new black hearts to talk about to soak up it's a hot topic right now and i think that that movie was finished way a little too early you know i i really think that the effect of a quiet place part two coming out after all of this stuff is surfacing and after our opinions are like on there on the internet to see and it, it's not within question anymore if if they had just waited a little bit longer then i think that it would have been obvious that the changes they need to make um because we are very vocal about this within the past two years um mm -hmm. and i think that this is just really unacceptable i really think that anyone who hasn't seen a quiet place part two should go if, if you can to the theater safely to watch it and form your own opinions um but i think we're at a time now that this this crap just sticks out like a sore mm -hmm. thumb and it's you can't it's in your face at this point because we're telling you this is inappropriate this doesn't need to be happening anymore and we're moving backwards now somehow um and so i don't want to say shame on y'all but shame on y'all no shame on zero you saw my tweets when i was live when i was in the theater and i was like i'm sick of this happening like i was live tweeting in the theater watching the movie like you didn't say what movie you were talking about and i knew i'm just like i knew i'm just like okay it's 20 again it's 2021 we are so above it we are yeah. so above it why are we working backwards but anyway let's move on to the next topic i want to get a little more positive so let's talk about <laughs> black car oh, good. Throughout history so we're going back a little bit um i think the the most obvious milestone or the most uh mainstream milestone that we all can celebrate is night of the living dead in 1968 with uh, Dwayne Jones as our lead. If you haven't seen Night of the Living Dead, it is an absolute must um, when talking about the black horror experience. That's the George Romero, the classic zombie flick. Um, and this man, uh, apparently the uh, Dwayne Jones, his, his part wasn't cast for a black man. It was just cast for a man. And that man just happened to show up and be, you know, rock the interview, rock the audition that day. So he rightfully got his part. Um, but what I don't think that George Romero saw coming with that was that this was going to be an icon. This movie was going to, you know, we're going to be reading about it in, in, in horror textbooks. We're going to be, you know, having this discourse about it now. And it really, uh, on, on the low, became a very important milestone. Because this is 1968, and y'all can imagine what living was like in 1968 and now you have a movie with a black protagonist he's the hero he's saving everyone he's he's slapping white people he's killing white zombies <laughs> right yeah. now and nobody's saying crap about crap and um <laughs> I, the, the line of course the line uh he's talking to i forgot the dude's name but the bald guy who's like he's threatening the uh he's, he's threatening the integrity of the survivors right now and he says to him you could be the boss down there but i'm the boss up here mm. and it's it's stating it's it's bringing this like solidarity to this isn't about anything other than there is a goddamn zombie apocalypse right now and you are threatening all of our existences yeah. and i'm the most qualified person to be leading us through this um and and i don't think there's any other way to put it that this this scene should be solidified in history as it is um that it's just iconic anything else y'all can think of um dwayne jones that's yes. the sentence mm -hmm. oh, I, that's all <laughs> yeah I, I mean i love night living dead and it's streaming almost everywhere you can find it almost on all streaming apps like along because it's free you can mm -hmm. find it you can watch it today um alongside with Dwayne Jones because yes iconic black exploitation although some of it was shaky 
some of it was shaky because they just <laughs> threw it together a bunch of a bunch of cheap films just trying trying to churn them out and make money but even with that you got the rise of like blackula let me tell y'all blackula and scream blackula scream amazing okay mm -hmm. you need to check those out sugar hill um things like that where we see all these black characters like, and most of the characters are black they're not sidekicks they're the main character they're the protagonist and the antagonist they're everybody in the film and i really really love that like black you love let me tell y'all it just it has a place in my heart also um demon knight tell some script demon knight with jada pinkett as the final girl i was girl. gonna say that yeah <laughs> she was the one she was our mm. black final girl blueprint AVP. I love that Oh yes, and she became like a <laughs> like the predator was like he was like he like dubbed her like an honorary predator at the end, which is like the coolest <laughs> thing <laughs> ever. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> that was it. But anyway, if if y'all in in the uh, watching in the audience don't know, black exploitation was a a period of black cinema around the nineteen seventies, um, which for the most part was just stories about us like jazz said we are the heroes and the protagonists and anyone everyone and everyone in between and with that period came you know there were some controversial things if you were to watch these these films now but they were getting there um we were finally having a spot like like we should have been this entire time and it gave us blackula scream black you scream we gave us sugar hill and all these gems that we can look back on today and yes they might be a little behind in terms of um sexism but the the drip was all there <laughs> and it was it was just part yeah. of the process and if you if you go back now and you watch the black you movies they're actually quite political and i think that and and i haven't i didn't watch uh blackula and and its sequel until maybe i was some somewhere in high school um, and that was the first time, and, and I had been used to seeking out um, horror films that have people that look like me for obvious reasons. Um, but then I go back to, to Blackula and Scream Back to Scream, and that was the first, the first instance I saw of like black intelligence and hierarchy and, and uh, like very uh, political in nature where it's not, um, one class looking down at the other class to argue. I mean, this Blackula was, he was in power. He was a powerful person. He would be able to discuss these things. I think um, they were uh, discussing like the the Atlantic slave trade or something like that, but it yeah. was very, um, it was very regal. And it was, it was kind of the first, the first instance in horror that I saw black people in power discussing something over a nice table everyone is is dressed eloquently and has the authority to be talking about these things and also for for the time that that came out i think that that's pretty rare and i also think it's crazy that that was my first instance of in i don't know maybe like 2010 i was watching this for the first time and i'm thinking wow this is kind of next level you know um and also i think that Speaking of of Blackula, Pam Greer in the the second one kind of gave us as Everything. black, black mm -hmm. femmes a a more uh, powerful stance, and I think in a lot of ways she was also a blueprint. Um, and everybody knows who Pam Greer is. She's hot. She is it, girl. And yeah. she, she is queen. Everything. But it wasn't just limited to her sexuality in that case, and that was yeah, uh, very much amazing. It was just amazing, and I think she we there was like some kind of voodoo stuff going on in there too as well. Mm -hmm. And the Which, good news in that was oh I didn't mean to cut you off sorry. No please because I was just going to say the good news about it is they showed it as a benevolent force and they weren't like in Scream Black it was Scream they actually had it as like a positive thing so. Mm -hmm. Which is yes. another trope. Yeah, yeah, which was being yeah. smashed, which was amazing to see taking back that that 
you know, voodoo source of evil. And, yeah. you know, where, what was like, Poltergeist was on like an Indian burial ground. And all <laughs> this, like spiritual, you know, this is the reason why we're being haunted. This is the reason why there's chaos in our suburbs is because the damn voodoo lady is like back at it again. But now she's finally using it for good. You can see that this is, this is a supernatural force that we can use mm-hmm. to, to help our people to solve problems and things like that, which is, which is, you know, real life. I, I personally don't have any hoodoo connections in my family, but I know people that do um, and people who have grannies that practice this. And it's not as scary as we think it is. She's probably wearing like a big hat and like looks like your average granny, not like some, some medicine lady from like a seemingly third world country. That's, that's not how it is. That's not accurate. Um, I think a lot of it has to do, oh, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I think a lot of it has to do with um, just misunderstanding. And then, of course, like the whole like satanic panic that went on during that time, too, yeah. of just like this moral panic of people not wanting their kids to be corrupted. And just like open your eyes and like listen to people, which is pretty much the basis of everything that we've been talking about today, which is, you know. That's just something I also want them to change as well, um, as far as the whole voodoo and hoodoo stuff. Like when I watched the movie Spell with um, Loretta Divine. That movie pissed me off because voodoo is not always used for evil. Mm-hmm. Why every time there's a horror movie, they use it and make it a negative thing. And then it's just the, like the whole concept of that movie pissed me off just because I'm like, y'all had an opportunity and chance. And, I'm, and I was happy to see black faces on the screen. Um, Amari Hardwick, Loretta Devine, like they're beautiful people. But that trope of using voodoo again for evil and fucked up, well, I'm sorry, messed up ways. Um, it just pisses me off, and I just wish that they retired it as well. Yeah, that, that's another one that's just, it's old, and it has to go. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. 2021. I'm going to get that Let's on the shirt. Let's move to the 90s. So yes. the, the 90s era, we start moving towards, like, what I guess the horror community would call conscious horror, and we start having um, these, these, um, these conflicts and these, um, I don't want to say... Uh, like coding, but they all these movies are about social issues. They kind of mimic what the country is going through at the time. Um, like we have Tales from the Hood, and we have a, a comment. Love to Clarence Williams the Third. Um, yes, may he rest in peace. But I think this started it. And of course, there's you know stuff doesn't age well, but that's just <laughs> that's just facts. Life. That's just <laughs> how it goes. Um, but I think that this was really the beginning. And Tales from the Hood really was uh, a banger in that sense. Um, Candyman, the original yeah. Candyman, um, is a story about a struggling black artist. Mm. Um, and there was some issues with that as well. But I'm confident that we're going to have those issues fixed now. I'm I'm very confident in in this new Candyman that we get to see in August. Um, yes. But I think that this is this is the start. And I think that the '90s and early 2000s is a really golden age. Um, and it, it's the beginning of seeing more of the horror that we will see, that we do see now, um, having uh, Black issues, class issues, gender issues in horror without it being the conflict itself. Um, uh, the, the people under the stairs, mm-hmm. Wes Craven, bless his heart, I really think that he is an ally. And, you know, he probably was working with what he had and the knowledge that he was, you know, that he had as with his uh, with his surrounding community. But I really do believe that that man was an ally as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and, yeah, this I, I think that that was, a, I don't know, a stepping stone. Anyone have anyone else, anything else to say about uh, 90s, 90s, uh, early 2000s are? Brandy. <laughs> Well, Brandy, like Jada Pickett, Pam Greer again in Bones. Like I was, yes. I was trying to see the resurgence of Black Horror again when Bones came out. Unfortunately, that movie didn't do as well. I feel like as it should have done. Because <laughs> that movie literally like scared the shit out of me when I watched it. Had it had drip too. too that yes. Movie. <laughs> um, and now I'm starting to see online, like on Twitter and stuff like that, that people starting to show more love to it and start to recognize it more. And I'm happy. And maybe, I don't know, like the resurgence of people showing, you know, these black horror films love more. Maybe it'll just, you know, produce more better stuff 
coming in the future. I don't know, because maybe it shows that people want to see more of this stuff. Mm -hmm. I think that a lot of the misgivings that we that we see in some of the attempts at black horror or black representation in horror, which are two very different things, but like I think a lot of those missteps is time repeating itself, believe it or not, because to think about how with the black exploitation period specifically, it's one of those eras that even though there was so much they did wrong, like so, so, so much, it helped like put the toe in the door and get it open so that things can start to happen. And that's why the 90s and the 2000s was kind of like a big social experiment. Think about Tyra Banks, sorry. Um, for, for, um, for, um, for us to learn what to do for horror nowadays. And we're still making those mistakes for much of the same reason. Because we're foot, our foot, sorry, our foot is now starting to get into the door when it comes to the major box office stuff. And it's because now studios think, oh, black horror can totally make horror, I'm uh, sorry, can make these type of numbers now. So let's go ahead and give them these bigger budgets. But that's still kind of a misstep because they're like, let's talk about race and let's talk about this black stuff. When in reality, it's like, we've been living through this. So when we saw that door crack open, we wanted to see something else, something mm -hmm. fresher. And there are creators out there that are, that, that are doing that. And I'm just going to finish it by saying this because y'all know I can talk. Y'all all know that. But um, <laughs> so I was going to leave it at this. I think that... Um, being a part of the diaspora is a very unique experience because so much of our culture has been stripped away from us that the storytellers that understand that and can write to the culture, they really do a damn good thing. Because when Bobby had me on his show for the Lovecraft Country, we could not get over, I can't remember the name of the particular episode, but the scene with the ghost coming out um, at the end of that one particular episode, because in the diaspora, we don't really fear our the, those who have gone out before us, you know, or our ancestors, as some of us refer to them, it's not a place of like dread. It's a place of comfort or belonging. And that's one thing that Lovecraft Country did correctly. They were able to kind of show that the other side for Black people who, you know, so much has been done wrong to us. It's not like that. Like our ancestors and those who have gone before us is not a, tr a traditional haunting. Like when you think about haunting, you always think about like, like y'all said, like the poltergeist, you know, it's on top of ancient Indian burial ground. Those are brown people under there. So for a person of that culture who is going in, they're not going to be haunted. They're not going to be affected negatively by that experience because they didn't do shit. <laughs> right. White people did that. You know, like, <laughs> what, what, that's all I'm saying. Yeah. Okay, so we're like running really low on time, and I, y'all know I love this question, and I want to get to it before we can come to a close, and y'all get your shameless plugs in. But I want to end with this question for my panelists: What is your favorite black horror moment? <laughs> <laughs> Who wants to start? I'll um, start because my oh, because okay. mine is. Um, I know it's bad to say because we all love Get Out, but it's the obvious answer. So I, I just want to get oh, it out the way. <laughs> No, we could we Pisces. Look, we could do this, Kyle. We could we could tag team this. I'm gonna say like because I'm just gonna say like for me, it was I was very excited when Get Out happened, and I'll never forget how it made me feel, especially because I think it was just that moment in time that I'm like the, the filmmakers get it. Black people having their bodies used for you know as a vehicle for um putting YD on the moon. That's exactly what that movie felt like, and I I vibe with it, and I always will and still do favorite black I, I agree with you i was going to say get out as well but i just knew that everybody was going to do that. <laughs> just because it was it, it was an iconic you know it was an iconic moment it's like how can you not choose that you know what i mean but i had to think a little back and i go back to what we were just talking about demon knight with jada pickett you know surviving and being a final girl because you haven't really seen any of that in horror and watching her persevere and go through all the stuff that she went through crazy white people, demons, <laughs> devils, and stuff like that. She persevered and became that final girl at the end and just went on about her journey to become the next demon knight. And that always continue. stuck with me. I wanted a continuation. Yes, I, I still want one. I, I, hey. Listen. <laughs> She's still with us. Yeah, yeah she, she is. Step away from the red table. And just fight the <laughs> Just step away for a little bit. <laughs> For me, the scene when um, when we, of course, figured or felt that Chris was gonna go to jail when we saw those police lights, and it ended up being his friend, and it was TSMFA, and I was like, yeah. yes, 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 yes. 
So the, the feeling that I felt watching that in the theaters and being like, oh, we're gonna go to jail. It's the same old, same old, but it was like, no, I got you. Like yeah. I'm just gonna leave you from these crazy like people. Jazz cat. Go jazz, you can go ahead. Okay. So wait. Cause I'm like, my phone went out. I don't know why. It's okay, girl. Favorite yeah, black horror yeah. moment. Okay. Good moment. Great. Thank you. I, was like, no. I don't know. Maybe it's spring. Um, so <laughs> ooh, what's one of my favorite? I don't know. I know. I do know. One of my favorite movies of all time is Tales from the Hood. They, I, they can fight my mom. Like you can fight your mama. I don't care. People. It's better than mortuary collection by miles. Oh, do not yeah. care. Mm -hmm. Um, my favorite part is when that little boy when he was going through what he was going through, spoiler alerts, if you have not seen Tales from the Hood, when he picks up that picture and folds that arm and the arm bends back like it's Stretch Armstrong, yes. they twist him up and he's just spinning around. Oh my God, I love that so much because the little boy had power. You know, mm -hmm. he didn't have power before and I want to see more black children with power over people who are harming them. So that was great. That's yes. beautiful. I that love that. Good. For me, it was um, Dwayne Jones telling that white man about himself. <laughs> um, that moved me. Um, now, was he making shaky behavior in terms of abusing women? Yes. Um, but everything outside of that, because we can't omit that because that's gross. I just love that he was getting the room together. He was letting them know that you could do whatever you want to talk about. And any other day, you could do whatever. But um, today is not the day. And to quickly add on uh, to Zero's comment about that, with them casting him and not really going, I'm purposely going to pick a black man. It changed the whole narrative of the story, including the end. So seeing him play that role was very powerful. And then you come in with the end where it's like that stab to the gut. You just sick because the person you like really bang with, love it. Drama. Fantastic. Drama. Mm. An because <laughs> usually I would say get out with Rod in the car, like T.S. But um, I've, I've changed my answer to the one scene in Lovecraft Country when Montrose was in the drag club with his oh. with his significant other. Oh, and, yes. And he just is oh my God. Like, that is so a moment of self-discovering. And I thought that was beautiful because we rarely get to see this, this freaking awesome intersectionality of what it's like to be a, a a gay person and also a, a black person because those two experiences are very different but they they collide with a whole lot of us and you know this this stuff happens and you rarely get to see that on tv on in on the big screen at all and so i was really thankful for that and it was just like it moves me every time i try every single time i try but we have three minutes left and i want y'all to get your plugs in so uh where can the audience find you online let's start with kai um, hi, Kai Kai Effects. If you want to follow me on Instagram or follow the page on Instagram, you can go to KFR Group. If you want to follow the podcast, my discussion is what is hard to conversation. You can go to MVH Podcast that's on Instagram or on Twitter. If you want to go directly to the site, go to www.kaiffx.com. And on YouTube. <laughs> Ryan. You can find me on all social media platforms at Brother Ghoulish, and you can find my podcast, Brother Ghoulish's Tomb, wherever podcasts are played. And you can find my website, brotherghoulish.com, for everything else. And if you want to see me in person, I'm haunting an underpass near you. Gotcha. Oh, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Bobby? Well, how can I follow up with that, sir? Like, right. <sighs> Um, <laughs> you can find me all social media, Twitter, Instagram, all that at Bobby Torres with a Z, not an S. Also, my YouTube page, Bobby Likes the Spooky. I review horror movies and do ratings and all that fun stuff and collab with these fine folks every once in a while. And um, yeah, oh, you also can find me on Instagram as well, Bobby Torres and Bobby Likes the Spooky. Um, you, you can find myself and Jasmine at um, girlthatscary.com. We're Girl That's Scary on everything, Twitter, Instagram. We also got a Patreon with exclusive content, so pull on that. Patreon.com yes. forward slash Girl That's Scary. Get into it. Open your purse for all these lovely people who are also on the panel because they are amazing. Period. <laughs>
Thank you, guys. <laughs> and I have been your host, Zero Gravity. You can find me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Letterboxd, Twitch, at IDK Gravity. Um, and thank you all for your, your uh, very kind questions and for being here with us today talking about our favorite topic. Um, give all my people a follow, please, or else. And I hope you stick around and uh, enjoy the rest of the panels for this weekend. Virtuous Con has a great lineup of Black creators. Enjoy the blurtiness. And uh, thanks for vibing with us, guys. Bye, Bye people.